Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Yet another entry for my channel here, again based on your suggestions. The third one for this particular series, so I'll be probably doing at least one or two more after this. And I'll have the rest debuted a little later this week on there. So as always, you know, thank you for your suggestions. This one I picked it because apparently a whole bunch of you um, seem to want this one to be talked about so again this is another one I've never heard about before but it's fascinating to hear that apparently so many of you out there have and considering the characteristics of this particular cryptid it absolutely comes out of something like the sci-fi world I mean I would expect something like this to be within the Lord of the Rings type world but no apparently here we have it in the real world uh, in the 19th and perhaps 20th century this particular cryptid somewhere out there so very very fascinating stuff um, the, the name of this particular cryptid is called the dingo neck uh, again dingo neck I hope I'm saying it right but that's how it's spelled uh, strange sounding name especially for something that's so fearsome looking as this particular uh, creature it also has a nickname it goes by the nickname of the jungle walrus and after I finish describing everything associated with this cryptid um, you'll be able to tell exactly why it's given that nickname on there what's fascinating too is that several people have had experiences with this cryptid nobody has yet been able to capture it or nobody yet has been able to uh, have any let's say concrete proof in terms of video or in terms of any kind of photographs but there have been several eyewitness accounts and I'll showcase those here in a moment so again when you have several people describing the same thing uh, it makes it for too much of a coincidence to have something like this out there that several people all were literally able to describe at the same time so again the dingo neck is a cryptid that's called the jungle walrus and the reason why it's called this is because of its most prominent features two large almost saber tooth like tusks that hang out on front of its upper jaw you're seeing a picture of it here and also the reason why it's called jungle walrus is because of its sheer size I mean this is a cryptid that is not a tiny creature it's not like the Enfield Horror that's just about the size of say half a human or a small child no this particular cryptid is a large one probably somewhere around 9 to 18 feet in length based on the descriptions from the two gentlemen I'm about to go over um, so these two gentlemen they are the ones that experienced this apparently nobody else had come across this cryptid before it has been actually like uh, when I say no one else like no one else from the western world has come across this before but this particular cryptid was a legend of some sorts within Africa tales of the cryptid uh, being essentially uh, handed down between tribes throughout the years and once there was more exploration done within the 19th century and then into the 20th century of certain parts of Western Africa that's when people started to run into this particular cryptid so here's how the, the, the cryptid uh, the dingo neck essentially looks like and this is based mainly off of an account from an explorer named John Alfred Jordan. Um, it said that this particular cryptid is again somewhere around 9 to 18 feet in length. It's a large one. To, get, to put you, uh, give you a perspective, you're looking at something that's almost like a bus size when it comes to the length of this. Um, it's a creature that's found deep within the African forest. I mean, it is deep on there. Nowhere near civilization. Uh, so it's not something that you uh, you can have like a group of people just walking around at night and running into this. No, you'll have basically have to find this creature on your own, which again shows why these two explorers uh, seemingly came across it on there. Uh, the creature is... Uh, the, the, besides the tusks that cover the front part of its face the other most prominent feature of it has to be from head to toe it's covered in some scaly uh, set of scales something that um, either is apparently some part of let's say uh, like a skin or some part of like an armadillo so where they have scales that are hardened and is done as a form of protection on there 
The creature also has apparently like the head of a lion. Um, you'll see some pictures of it here where it definitely resembles the front face of a lion, but the back part of it, um, I guess you could call those tentacles or mandibles of some sort. Um, they're not fur related, it's something like uh, just some appendages that are protruding from its head. And it has those appendages, who knows, that may be part of the scales themselves, or they could just be an ancillary part, but um, it, it makes it look like the head of a lion, even though it's not, because of those um, appendages that protrude from its head. It also has a large horn on the top part of its head, uh, like, much like a rhinoceros, it has a horn of its own on there. And then the next most prominent feature, besides everything else, besides the tusks, besides the scaly skin, is the fact that it has a scorpion-like tail which apparently is said to have a marked point at the end much like a scorpion because the way it attacks is it'll essentially use this to paralyze or stun its victims and then that way it can do its work in terms of eating the particular animal that it was stalking on there so this is like the platypus of cryptids it's a whole amalgamation of several items here you have reptile-like scales, you have the head of a lion, you have the rhinoceros horn on the top, and then you have like a scorpion-type tail at the end of it. Definitely something as if you took several animals all together, mixed them into a pot, shook it, and then let it sit overnight, and then the results are something like this. Very, very fascinating creature, a uh, very, uh, very scary creature as well because based on its legends on there um it's uh, uh, it's besides being called a jungle rawwis apparently it's a hunter of very large animals um it hunts rhinoceroses it hunts uh crocodiles or um it hunts um other large animals maybe even um what is it called like a monkeys or whatever that's there in the jungle on there it is apparently one of the top alpha males or one of the top alpha creatures hippos crocodiles whatever comes within its territory it is prey even apparently the uh personnel that are around there like tribesmen or anyone else that just happens to fall within its area it is apparently a very, very territorial creature, and it has a large amount of territory to cover for its hunting grounds. So if you happen to cross something like this, um, you're pretty much a goner, considering uh, essentially how uh, big and how fearsome and how many weapons this particular creature has. Um, if you ever wanted to look up, if there ever was something to look up in a dictionary for the word predator, this would be something like this, absolutely. So um, several personnel, again, uh, explorers have run into this creature. Uh, one of them is, again, the explorer John Alfred Jordan, who apparently ran into this creature back in 1907. Uh, this, he, met, uh, he met this creature at the River Magori in Kenya, and he actually shot at this creature, but uh, even using uh, the gun that he had at that time, which apparently was a 303, um, like a British gun of some sort. It pretty much just only served to quote unquote anger the creature, annoy it at most, and then it just went away at that point. So this is a creature again that was shot with a gun and uh, essentially it just felt a, more of like an annoyance on there. But it's John Alfred Jordan, the explorer, who came to describe the most of this creature on there. Um, so you, we can thank him with regards to having what could be considered the most uh, prolific description of this creature on there. Another one, apparently another explorer, but more of like a hunter, was a gentleman by the name of Edgar Beecher Bronson. He's another one that was able to describe it um, in detail. And in fact, let me see. Yeah, he has this uh, pretty, pretty lengthy description of how the creature looks. He described it, his own experience, the one he ran into, was about 14 or 15 feet long, head big as that of a lioness, but shaped and marked like a leopard, two long white fangs sticking down straight out of his upper jaw, back broad as a hippo, scaled like an armadillo, but colored and marked like a leopard, wow, like oh, pretty much all three animals all at once, and a broad fin tail. 
God, but he was a hideous old haunter of a nightmare, was that beat fish, uh, beast fish. Uh, blast that blighter's fangs, but they looked long enough to go through, to go clean through a man on there. So that was his description. What's interesting is that um, this particular cryptid, again, I was mentioning early on in the video, that um, it's been passed down for such a long time, tales of this creature within Africa, and only recently by uh, European and Western world explorers uh, coming across it. Uh, but back then, um, with so many generations of tribesmen passing it down, you'll see an image here. Apparently, this is a cave drawing that's been found. Uh, let me see which area it was here. It's actually in South Africa near the Western Cape. It's a cave painting of an unknown creature that fits this particular monster, the dingo neck. Um, because apparently the creature that's supposed to be it, I believe is the one towards the left. It's the one that almost looks like it's squashing that deer, that antelope right there. Uh, because there you see the long appendage on the back there you see the two front tusks in the front um, there you see those pop marks which are apparently supposed to resemble scales on it but you know this is a long ago cave painting uh, done by who knows how many long uh, generations of tribesmen back and yet here we have this particular creature being drawn on a cave as proof. I mean, unless they were uh, back then, back during the caveman eras, unless they were in the world of making up their own fairy tales at that time, it's way too much of a coincidence to think that why would they draw something like this unless they were actually seeing it? Um, and again, unless they were in the world of storytelling and they were just creating their own made-up stories, uh, this shows further proof that a creature like this, the Dingo Neck, does indeed exist out there in this world and has existed for a very, very long time. It may even be actually a descendant, interestingly enough, a relative of a real-life creature here. Uh, much more common in certain parts of the world in Africa and Asia called a pangolin which you'll see a picture of here and this is a very unique creature it's essentially like a armadillo of sorts but it's um, far more different looking like it looks uh, like an ar instead of an armadillo where it has a large shell covering it a large hard shell like a turtle here its skin is itself the scales like a um, I guess you could say like a snake of some sort interesting I've never heard of this creature before but it's out there I mean you, here you see a picture of it um, somebody holding it and this may be essentially a long lost cousin the dingo neck of this creature the pangolin on here very very fascinating stuff so again what do you guys think the dingo neck fearsome fearsome creature if anyone has any other stories associated with this creature um, you know please share them below unfortunately these were the only two that I could come about um, one from the early 19th century and the other gentleman um, I didn't exactly was able to tell uh, what year it was but presumably around that same era as well but that's about it no other further experiences so who knows uh, maybe the dingo neck is a cryptid that uh, the further that humans go into the jungle to uh, create cities and to live in them the further away the dingo neck goes to create its own territory so uh, no no further stories associated with this particular fearsome creature but again, as I mentioned before, this is absolutely the epitome of the word predator. If you look it up in the dictionary, you would find something like this, this particular creature, considering how ferocious and how fearsome it looks and all the weapons that it has at its disposal. It is absolutely a cryptid not to be messed around with. So, all right. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.